Hello and welcome to our weekly Pasha Shia with the commentary of the Al Shekhakodesh. This week's Pasha is Bahalaiska, and the dedications for this week are two dedications we've uh, been uh, mentioning for quite a considerable amount of time. So if you've been joining this year, I'm sure you've been davening for these two people. Uh, both are waiting for good news. Uh, Rafael Chai Ben Sora is waiting for the results of tests, and the shear should be discussed that they are good, and the treatment that will follow will be uh, merely the shaliach for Hashem to give him a refu shalema. Uh, the other is for somebody called Oriachaim Ben Chani Yehudis, and he has been, he's a little boy who's waiting for a transplant. Uh, so we are waiting, we're all davening for him to, for good news to come, and a transplant will be available, and he should also have a refu shalema, and the operation should be a complete success. Hashem should send him a long arichas, arichas yomim, and a healthy uh, a life too. This week's Pasha is uh, very, very troubling. Um, and I'll tell you why in a few moments. But before I do so, of course, Baalazka, the book is Bamidbar. Bamidbar, literally in the desert, is known in the non-Jewish world as the book of Numbers, uh, because of course it starts or opens with the counting of the Jewish people. But if I was to give the book a title, um, and nobody's asked me, but if I was to choose the title of the book, I think the theme that repeats itself most stridently throughout the entire Sefer is the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu. So I would call it the Book of Leadership. Now, this is a theme we pursued or we looked at last week in the Parsha, when it, was, it talked about the nausea. So if you recall there, it, talks, it starts in the plural, then it moves to the singular. Uh, and then, so the, the message that we saw from the Alshuk is that the leader of the Jewish people, Moshe Rabbeinu, he's got to speak to the Jewish people, and he can speak to them harshly, Daber, the Omarta Alehem, speak to them harshly, because sometimes a Jewish leader has to speak harshly to his congregants, to his congregation, and the congregation in this place is the entire, in this case, is the entire Jewish people. So sometimes Moshe can speak harshly, but the assessment that Hashem was telling him but if the Daber speaking harshly doesn't work, but Omarta, Omar, of course, as we mentioned so many times, is to speak gently. If Daber doesn't work, then speak with Amira. And if that doesn't work, if you can't get through to the people as a whole, then Isha, Isha, and then it talks about the nausea, because both an Isha and Isha can reach the highest spiritual heights. So look for individuals. So the, the, the pattern of leadership here is deal with the community as a whole when you can, then speak to, uh, if you can't speak to all of them strongly, speak gently. If that doesn't work, seek out individual, individuals to listen to your message. And of course, we all remember the famous Gemara and Gita when Rabbi Kiva's um, tens of thousands of Talmudim all died. He sought replacements, but he didn't look for thousands, he looked for five. There were just five Talmudim and they were able to reestablish the link of the Torah carrying on through the generations. So sometimes leadership is inspiring a huge amount of people, and sometimes it's only inspiring a small amount of people. I see that in our share here, I can see when it goes in my Torah Anytime channel, you can't see the numbers there. I don't know how many see it. Um, and, but on the YouTube channel, I think it's only about 20, 30, sometimes more, people who watch this. But I was very inspired to find that even though it's a small number, at least it may be much more in, in Torah anytime, but even though it seems to be a small number uh, in the YouTube channel, when I was in England recently, so many people, Rabonim, came up to say how important this al Shia is to them. And uh, I've heard that from all over the world. So sometimes you concentrate on the small number. And after all, it's a complicated Shia anyway. So uh, it, and it is a Shia, so... I don't, I don't suppose it's going to be the same as uh, some of my more uh, larger presentations, which are maybe more entertaining, but certainly easier to digest. Okay, so the first point I think I want to make is that the, the, the book of Bamidbar is really, from my point of view, uh, an analysis of the values and the tactics of leadership. And we're going to see that um, as we uh, progress through the book, which is just full of drama and incident um, from rebellions and, well, all will show my Shrebena's leadership. That's the first thing. Um, so let's move to the, uh, the Parsha. Now, the, the bit I'm jumping into, because I'm jumping into the middle, is a time of rebellion. Uh, it's interesting. So if 
I turn my little art scroll here. I have to turn to the art scroll. This time, as you know, those who are with me regularly, uh, the translation of the al is often disputed uh, by the by the al and even, and even though it's disputed, um, it, it doesn't really say there's anything wrong with it. It's just the al sees it sometimes differently. And uh, we're going to see an example of that this week too. Anyway, uh, it's it, there's so many in, uh, themes running through it. Uh, Moshe pleads with Yisroi not to leave the Jewish people. Straight after that, and then it says, Vahi ben Asar, or on very famous Bosak, Vahi ben Asar, on Bayam, Moshe, Kuma Hashem, Vyafut Saivech. When the Aaron, the, the tabernacle, moved forth, then Moshe declared, Hashem, you should scatter your enemies. And as famously, it's uh, there is two upside down nuns which single this, these, this, just this, uh, these words, these two psukim, out from the rest of the Parsha, the rest of the Torah. Uh, and of course, the question is why. And Rashi explains because it's a bit like uh, the report card the kid gets home from school and he's not done well that year. It's been a very bad year. And it's one uh, unremitting list of uh, let himself down, didn't try, put in no effort, one teacher after the other, after the other. And so we, we have incident after incident to break up that monotony, monotony is not the right word, that um, uh, um, depressing catalogue of where the Jewish people got it wrong, then there's an, there's a, 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 an artificial insertion into the Parsha of this, these two psukim. So it's quite clear what happened afterwards, right, because we've got rebellions and, another, and more rebellions. But the question is what happened before? And Rashi says, very interesting, before, what did they do wrong? Moshe came down from Mount Sinai, he'd given them the Torah, he taught them the Torah, and after he taught them Mitzvah number 613, they said, is that it? And Moshe says, yes, that's it. And they ran away from Mount Sinai, uh, say that it's the rabbis in the Talmud, like a child runs away in, apparently, all over the world, at the end of the school day, whether it's a, a horn that sounds, a bell that sounds, or whatever. But children run away from school. The Jewish people ran away, fled Mount Sinai, just in case there were any more mitzvahs coming down the pipeline um, to make sure that uh, they weren't there to receive them. So that's the uh, thing that they did wrong. And then we move into the area of rebellion. Now, there's a, a first rebellion straight after the Upside Down Moons, which we're not going to focus on. But we're going to focus on the one that came directly after it, because the, the punishment, which is a fire breaking out and people being killed, uh, is uh, apparently not uh, sufficient to quench the flames of discontent within the Jewish people. And then it, the Posik and Posik base, so this is, if you are got your little art scroll or whatever homage in front of you, chapter Yudalif, chapter 11 and verse 4, and it says the following thing. Vaha Safsuf, Ani Safsuf. Hmm. Asafsuf. Um, it seems the root of the word seems to be asifa, which is a gathering. Uh, the art scroll says the rabble. Rabble. Nice dramatic word. But asafsuf asher b'kiboy. And the asafsuf that were amongst them, the Rashi translates asafsuf as the rishoim, the evil people. But asafsuf, again, as I pointed out, the root is to gather an asifa. And these were, the Alshik is certainly going to learn, this was the Erev Rav. And indeed, the, the Talmud teaches that all the major disasters that happened to the Jewish people throughout the 40 years that we were in the desert, uh, and as I'll tell you in a second beyond that, uh, were all caused by the, by the, the air of Rav, the insincere uh, tens of thousands of Egyptians who followed the Jewish people out uh, from Mitzrayim. Their uh, conversion to Judaism was not predicated on the essential ingredients of sincerity to attach yourself to Hashem, but rather it was uh, expediency. They wanted to be part of the winning team. And they had never really uh, jettisoned their, their previous uh, beliefs. Um, and that's why they caused trouble. You may remember from a previous year that uh, I saw, uh, quoted the, the Medrash uh, Rabbah, this is in Shemais, after the making of the, the golden calf, which certainly, when we saw that, the, the uh, evidence of the Posuk there, Psukim there were clearly, it was clearly caused by the Erev of Rav, Hashem says, um, go down, raid, because your people have done something terrible. My people, says Moshe. Well, could have said, uh, isn't it your people? Um, no, it's, it's the Erev of Rav that he brought, that Moshe Rabbeinu brought out. And when the Medrash reports this, the Medrash says an astonishing thing. Hashem says, yes, yeah, your people. I, I told you specifically not to bring them out. To which Moshe Rabbeinu turns around and says, 
but didn't you teach me your hand is always open to receive those who are returning? Well, the strange uh, uh, phraseology is more than puzzling because I could say that next week I'm returning to the UK or returning to Scotland, assuming you've never been in the UK. And if you have, if you've never been to Scotland, that's an enormous mistake. But uh, if you've never been to Scotland, then you could not say I'm returning to Scotland or returning to the UK, you say I'm going to, but I could say returning. So why does Moshe defend himself and his decision by saying, remember, Shem, you told me that you are, your hands are always open to receive returnees. But these are not returnees. These are people who've newly joined the Jewish people, who've never been to Clown Israel, as it were, before. So why is he returnees? The al quoting that Medrash, he says it slightly differently, um, that he translates these words in the Medrash, I assume his Medrash is the same as ours, possible it could be a, a different nusach, a different girsa, a different version, but I doubt it. I think the al is interjecting his explanation of it when he says that not returnees, um, but rather he says lost souls, that these people are, isn't a good thing to bring back lost souls. What lost souls? So the explanation seems to be that these were the generations, remember we were in Egypt for 210 years, only with the last generation gets out. And of course the Egyptian plan, the Egyptian regime was there uh, with their plan in motion to seduce the Jewish people, to get us to give up our religion and to volunteer into accepting their religion. And generations past lived and died as Egyptians whose ideal was Egypt. And we're quite happy to, to, to die, live and die as Egyptians. But somehow or other, it seems to be uh, implicit, both in the language of the Medrash and in the Alshad, that in actual fact, these, the Erev Rab, were the souls who were returning, you're always given another chance at it, another shot at it. So these were the, them coming back again. But they're there all the way through the Torah, and they cause trouble re repeatedly. It's very hard to give up your background and, and those roots that, uh, and overcome your past, even if the past is in a different life. You're only here in the second life, third or fourth, in order to overcome that previous life. But it's a difficult job to do. And they consistently seem to fail, which takes us full circle. So then why is uh, Moshe Rabbeinu uh, able to argue with Hashem and Hashem able to accept his argument and his debate? That it's good to accept these people if they are consistently going to cause trouble. And as I said before, the Vilna Gon says it wasn't just in the 40 years of, of the wandering in the desert, that generation, that these people caused trouble. But he states rather chillingly, that in every consequent gen generation, every consequent era, those who emerge from within the Jewish people, nominally Jews, who occupy the position of the greatest opponents of Torah and our connection with Hashem throughout the generations, these are these era of Rav re-emerging. So if that's the case, then the accusation and the, the charge sheet against Moshe Rabbeinu now becomes a very long one indeed uh, to be read out in court. We could read over incident after incident after incident. So therefore, why is Moshe Rabbeinu let off the hook so easily? My own theory, and I've not seen this anywhere, so therefore you are more than welcome to reject this, but I think the answer is really quite simple. The only predominate, the only grow to positions of power by negative behavior of the Jewish people creating negative spiritual forces which are feed them feed them and their their plots and plans and raise them up as we have volunteered to go down. So they act effectively as a barometer or a thermometer like the doctor as it were taking the pulse or being able to check the temperature to, to gauge the general health of the patient. When the patient is clown the strong and these people are uh, rising and controlling events um, and attacking the Torah, then that shows us that we have neglected the Torah. It's rather like the famous um, Bach uh, his commentary when it, in the Shulchan Aruch and Hilchus Hanukkah that point, it points out that the lack of passion uh, for of the Jewish people for the Torah allowed the Greeks and their allies, once again the Arab Rav, uh, according to the Vilna Gun, uh, to rise and, and control the Jewish people. Only when we uh, reignited that passion were we able to defeat them. So they seem to act as a barometer and a thermometer. Anyway, with all of that as an introduction, let's see what the Pesukim say. 
And it's very, very long and very complicated, the Alshif this week. So you forgive me if I abstract pieces and uh, make it far more uh, uh, easy to digest. So here is um, what the, the Psukim say, and then we'll set the scene, and then we'll move to the Alshif. So, but Asafsuf, that's the, the air of Rav. Asher Berkeba, who are amongst them, he's Saiva Taiva. Uh, Oh, let's see how they translate that. Why can why should I struggle? Oh, oh blah, 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 blah. sad. Let's see. And there are amongst the cultivate, cultivated a craving. Well, that's a nice way of putting it. Uh, and you see just in that how in order to make the English sound reasonable, you have to mistranslate. Taiba, his cyber taiba means desire to desiring would be the literal and, and accurate translation, but it sounds really ridiculous. And remember, as we said before, and as I know from my many uh, translated books, which is five. Every translator is a commentator. Uh, you have to put the, the best spin on it, the best translation you can, but it might not be a literal one. Anyway, and the Jewish people also started to cry. Yom say, Me boss, who will give us meat? We want meat. No vegans in the desert, apparently. Oh, actually, come to think of it, they were all vegans. Hmm. Maybe that was the problem. Anyway, Zachano uh, Esadaga, we remember the daig of the fish, dogo. Asher Nachal was from, we ate in Egypt. Oh, really? They ate fish in Egypt, didn't they? Chin for nothing. Esa Kishoyim and the cucumbers. Vesa Tachim and the melons. Vesa Chotzir and the leeks. Vesa Bitsolim and the onions. Vesa Shulim and the garlic. And they all got that for free. Gosh, it was a holiday, wasn't it? Really a great vacation. Does that make sense? No, certainly not. But and our souls are withering or drying up. In call built is a mon and Um all we see is this mon stuff, this manna from the heaven. We're sick to death of the manna, I suppose, is what they're saying. But mon and the Torah tells you exactly what the mon was like, etc. Obviously, miraculous food appeared every day. And then jumping a little bit. Abishra Moshe Esa Am and Moshe hears the people Boichalif Bakosov and the cry for their families. The Mishbakosov, Ish Le Pesakola, each is dead in the, the tent of his of his of his uh, the, the door of his tent. The Yikar Avashem Moid Baini Moshe Ra and Hashem was furious in the eyes of Moshe, it was terribly bad. Now I'm going to tell you the Alshak outside, and I was hoping to looking at it inside. What was the double expression? The craved a craving, as they translated this here. The desired a desiring, as I translated it. So there's two things going on here that's going to be very critical. One is, indeed, they seem to be fed up with this spiritual food. And second of all, the other title is hinted at when it says, eat the, the, well, I'll read that bit to you again, actually. Uh, Boyka, they were crying the mish because of to their families. Or about their family, says the Alsha. Really, the underlying, the critical complaint of the Jewish people is that they were, they objected. Angry is not the right word, which I nearly said, but they were, they didn't want, they wanted to reject the Torah's constraints on who you could marry and what uh, relationships, what sexual relationships were, were permiss permissible to Jews. Of course, in Egypt, um, then any relationship uh, was, was permissible. It was a particularly corrupt, sexually corrupt society. They objected to the, 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 uh, the model. Judaism's great, one of Judaism's great gifts to the world was the idea of a man marrying a woman, ideally for the rest of their lives and bringing a family, a stable family together uh, into the world and creating a stable family. That they objected to. But they didn't say that. They didn't say that at all. Um, Yishra, he, hears them, he hears them crying about their families. It's not explicit, but Yichar Hashem and Hashem is furious with this. Okay. Um, and then Moshe goes on and seems to challenge God. Now let's just consider that for a second, uh, what we've talked about, that really the real uh, uh, agenda is that they are angry about marital, the marital, the strict marital laws on the Jewish people, relationship laws for the Jewish people. But they come out, what they say is, we're fed up with the mon. No, I mean, I've got a little bit of sympathy, and maybe you have as well. After all, um, it was just a few weeks ago we had Shavuos, and when we were at Shavuos, a couple of people where I was very, very pleased to be uh, with a wonderful community because they're called the Young Israel of Bal Harbor, but it was a three-day Yontif, Shabbos and two days 
you know, different, of course, that Shavusi stay up all night. I always have asked the rabbi, my rabbi um, Moskowitz, a friend of mine, who was my host, I like to stay up and say Shirim all the way through Shavuos. And I'm being selfish. I'm not trying anyway to be noble or a, a pretend sadic. It's just it keeps me awake. My miscalculation was not realizing that uh, the length of the night in Florida is much, much longer than it is in New York or my old stomping ground, uh, Manchester, where you could easily say three Shirim during the night. It's time to dive him. No, there, mm, no, four Shirim I gave and there was an hour break in between so it was quite a struggle um and a couple of people said to me oh, three days on top is tough i suppose we could all move to israel maybe we, uh, maximum will be two days on top. um but you get the idea sometimes it's just a bit too much and that seems to be what they're arguing about this is too much um and we want meat okay uh, or flesh but there was a hint there, says the al Sheikh, that the flesh they wanted was human flesh, not to eat, of course, but again, as we mentioned before, an objection to the constraints on the sexual relationships for love for Jews. After all, in Egypt, incest is perfectly okay. Uh, that's what's going on. Now, this bit we're going to read in the Chumash, and then I'll, I'll take you into the al Sheikh. And following on my, my lead from, or my lead into the Shia, we'll see exa uh, exactly the, the brilliance uh, uh, of Moshe's leadership, the passion of his leadership, and the passion for the Jewish people, even when we're getting it wrong. And of course, if you look back or listen back to our shirim on um, the golden calf, you will see that Moshe Rabbeinu fights, literally, Gamora says, Gamora and Brochus, and Moshe fights for the Jewish people, uh, firing uh, his words at heaven like arrows, shooting arrows at heaven, says the Gomorrah. So it's quite a fight that he puts up for us. So we'll see another example of that in just a second. Let me read on and so we know what's going on. So if you're following me in Yudalef, inside, so again, we're trapped to Yudalef, and then it says the following thing. Um, Moshe says, uh, yes, and this is Yudalef. Yudalef, Yudalef, easy to remember. Chapter 11, verse 11. V'yoma Moshe el Hashem, Moshe says to Hashem, Lama hari oslavdecha. Why have you done badly to your servant, I himself? Why did I not find favor in your eyes? Now I'll read this to you in the in the art scroll translation, and this is the, the critical difference we're going to see where um, the Alshik points out to the Hebrew uh, as he, uh, he insists is a very different translation to the art scrolls. Let here's, let's hear what the art scroll has to say. Um, Moshe uh, and Moses. And Moshe said to Hashem, why have you done evil to your servant himself? Why have I not found favor in your eyes that you place the burden of this entire people on, on me? Now that's simply not a very good translation. The Hebrew for that would be shetsum, that you put, which would fit with what they translated. But that's not what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew says losum, to put. And if we translate it that way, it's extremely difficult. Let's see what happens. Um, why have you done evil to me? Uh, but, uh, uh, why don't I find favor in your eyes? Losum to put is masakola amaze olai. And then it says, it seems almost poetic. Ha'anochi um, horiisi is called ha'amaze. Did I conceive, like a father conceives a child, did I conceive this people? Did I bring them into, into the world? No. Eladtihu. Um, that you could say to me, carry him in your bosom as a, a wet nurse carries her child. Manly boss, where am I going to get meat to feed them? Well, says we call Amaz to give to all the people. Give us meat and we will eat. I'm not able to, to bear this entire Jewish people. And of course, straight after this, as I'm sure you know, Hashem appoints 70 elders to, as it were, be the Sanhedrin, who will work with Moshe to carry the burden of the Jewish people. That seems to be what's going on here. The al has something else to say. So let me grab the al and turn. Now, again, just in case any of you are at home have got this al this version of the al then um, this is on page um, Nun He, I think. Let me just make sure about the place here. Yes, page Nun He. And he gives two introductions. 
So I'll read to you the two introductions. And it's one of them is extraordinarily interesting. And again, it very much relates to, we're now moving into the territory of leadership, Moshe's leadership in particular of the Jewish people, but we can extrapolate from that to general Jewish leadership. So let's hear what we have to say. The rabbis say the following thing, and this is from the Medrash Rabbah, but it's Devorim Rabbah. If you're interested to look it up, Aleph Ches. Moshe said to the Jewish people, when he's recalling this incident, don't let it enter your mind. When I said, Can I, you're too much for me to bear, don't get it wrong. Don't think that you were too much for me to bear. Quite the opposite. I could have led 10,000, or a 1,000 rather, um, more, so 600,000 Jews, so multiply that by, by 1,000. So why did I say I'm not on my own able to do this? That you're overwhelming the legal system, the system of justice in the Jewish people, and the people you go to for, um, uh, for, for guidance, they are going to be culpable uh, for the fact that you are not, uh, you've done wrong. And I'm going to come back to that theme in a moment. Hold that idea that the judges are going to be culpable for the behavior of the people that they're putting on trial. And another one. Oid, Don Machine, it's another second idea. Now, this is very interesting. Relative to the soul of the Roy, Roy means a shepherd, but it's, it's a euphemism for the leader the leader of the Jewish people, relative to who, what, and how he is, what spiritual level he is, that will determine what he can bring to the Jewish people, what he can offer to the Jewish people, what he can get heaven to give to the Jewish people. It reflects who he is, what he delivers. So he says, <laughs> That's determines what he can bring. By definition, if we follow that through, that Moshe, there was nobody as great as Moshe in the world of the Jewish people in the history of the Jewish people, nor will there be. Then that means that somebody on such a high spiritual level, what can he bring to the Jewish people? Very high spiritual stuff. The highest quality, the, with the greatest purity. Uh, rack mean uh, mon so that by definition when it comes to food he's going to bring spiritual food food that simply appears that has to be gathered up and can as a, as a consequence oh this light's coming let's see the light's coming back let's go switch back on oh i think it's overheated or something all right i hope you can still see me um and that mon and that manna will be simply something which is uh it's it's the highest it's the highest um uh, spiritual food and they don't want it. And as I say, sometimes we feel, you know, three days out of, that's just too much for me. I just can't deal with that. So therefore, um, let's read on a little bit further. But not by you. So this is the al Now let's pursue and see what's going on here. Omar Moshe bin al said to himself, in Sophie, in Iker Bechiasam al I know fine well, and that's why we mentioned before, that the, uh, let's see if we get the slide to come on because it's affecting the, oh there, it came on again. That should be better. Um, good, um, because when the light's not, uh, and the camera's difficulty focusing, it is insufficient light. Um, so basically, uh, that threw me a little bit. Yeah, I know fine well that even though you're crying and talking about meat, what you really mean is a hint and meat what you really want. You're really talking about the, the, the a rebellion against the terrorist sexual laws, as we mentioned before, is taiva taiva, a double expression of taiva, of desire. Okay, ah, omnum, however, he need bushum haskir. It's interesting, but you're embarrassed to say so. You haven't said so. But Yoma Moshe El, this is Bosa says, El Hashem, Lama Rios La Avdako, Lama Moshe came in Echel, Lassum is Masa Kola Omaze. So then that's when Moshe says, Why won't you you put them on me? Let's see what this means. Um, Esa, a rack, Al Iski Mishpochus, so also Lamoy Esa Rias. But really, what they were talking about is the the restrictions on who they can marry. However, he need Bush and Mahaska, too embarrassed to say that. Rag to Luna Bosaba Echel. So they've turned it into, as it were, because that is the process of, of, of every rebellion. You don't come out and say just 
we want to tear the whole thing down. It says we want to change this and then that and then more and more and more. So at the original stage of the rebellion, all they're talking about is meat. Uh, of course, there's another agenda, and Moshe sees through the agenda. Uh, perhaps they will not be able to move on to the rest of the agenda. But not if I'm not able to give them what they want. But if I'm not able to give them what they want, remember they're asking for meat. So if I can deliver to them meat, then, which of course is what he wants to do, then if I can change their diet, then I take away their pretext and I diffuse their pretense uh, and maybe we'll never get to what they're really after. And after the Golos Gam Arias, and then we'll never move, on, never move on to the Arias thing. Okay, in some Marechas Mamar of Hu, Talunu Vosar, Lamar, Lama Hari Oisa. So it says, Why have you done evil that you've not allowed to put on me the burden? Because what can I bring the Jewish people? All I can bring the Jewish people, me, Moish Rabina, the Lokom Israel, Kamosh Oad, the person at the highest spiritual level, and then all I'm able to bring at my level is the spiritual food. But could it not be the case that you will give me the ability? to bring them food that was really literally below my level, unworthy of me to bring. But maybe in this case, that will defuse this rebellion. Now, let's put this together, what we said before. And that is to say that Moshe Rabbeinu in last week's parsha was told, you can speak harshly sometimes to the Jewish people. They're a very high spiritual level. If they're not, they speak gently. If that's not going to work, you look for individuals. But when it comes to an outright rebellion, how do you defuse it without, as it were, turning into a civil war, and that is by giving in to the most um, reasonable or less challenging uh, demands to stop the, it graduating or deteriorating, is a better word, into things which will tear down the whole fabric of the Jewish people. And that's what Moshe is really saying. I want you to put on me, not not put on me. Lama Haru is going to affect badly on me and my leadership that all I can do is give them what they don't want. It's too high they're claiming for them. And indeed, for some of them it clearly is, at least at this stage. So instead, how about if I give them what they want? Now this is an interesting insight into leadership. Sometimes you have to back off. Um, there's a phrase in English, um, you can win a battle but lose the war. Sometimes it's good generalship to concede a defeat in order to regroup and then mount a new campaign and actually win the war. That's what Moshe Rabin is doing here as well. Okay, that leads us uh, to wish you all a very good Shabbos and hopefully uh, our two young men that we are davening for will have the Rafu Shalema that we're looking for. And I look forward to seeing you here again next week.